So, Lord, I just thank you for each and every one here and just ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through me, teach through me, um, that you would help me see and hear all you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, I heard, um, I heard the Lord say when I was sitting there, he said to tell you that if you will be willing to put the past behind today, that the future will be bright. There's just something about it that some here are still kind of stuck in some things from the past, whether it has to do with what's happened with the church, what's happened in your personal life or whatever. But it's, it's a real important thing today to put the past behind and, and go forward. That means even if you had an, uh, a, uh, well, this thing keep, just keeps flopping around, I don't know. <laughs> put it behind. <laughs> um, but even if it's, you had an argument with your spouse, you know, yesterday. Forget about it today. Let it go, let it go, as the song goes, you know. Um, that it's really important to let that go so that you can go forward and focus on what the Lord has for you. And, you know, we're in some really tumultuous times here in this nation in particular. It's even worse than in the rest of the world because they all have the COVID thing. But not only that, but we have what's happened with the elections as well. And, and it's pretty serious. You know, when you turn on the TV and you hear all that's going on, sometimes it can get you pretty upset. Um, but I feel like that the Lord is saying, you know, just pray and then let it go and don't get immersed in it. One of the things that we do sometimes is we get so immersed in things that we allow that spirit of strife to stay on us and be with us through the day and even with our families. I worked at an all news, all talk radio station back when it wasn't even real popular, you know, and uh, Pat Robertson had bought the station that I was working at that was owned by Jimmy Swaggart. Well, let me just kind of go down the history. So I started out working at PTL for Jim Baker. That place folded. Morris Cirillo came in and he bought the television station. So I worked for him. And then my boss from PTL went to work at a radio station in Charlotte owned by Jimmy Swaggart uh, and called me. And I went to work there and it was sold to Pat Robertson. And, and I still stayed there and went to work there all without leaving the Charlotte area. Um, and then I met Steve Thompson, who was helping Rick Joyner start Morningstar. And I was their very first secretary and office manager back in May of 1990. And I've kind of hung out with all of them ever since, although I didn't stay working with them because they really couldn't afford to pay me as much as I needed to make to support my two children because I was a single mother, um, but stayed with them. And we, we weren't even a church or anything then. We just started having meetings in Rick's living room. Um, and then, and, and I'm like, there was 10 or 12 of us just meeting, discussing dreams and things we felt the Lord was saying. Then we had um, once a month meetings like in a hotel uh, where we would rent a meeting room there. And then we started School of the Spirit, SOS, on Friday nights on a side um, thing off of their house. It was like three or four car garage that they changed into a big meeting room. We did that for five years, then we became a church. And now we're back where I started at, at PTL, <laughs> at the hotel that was it, that's on those that property, and that's what uh, Morningstar owns. And But in the meantime... I had been attending a church, since we weren't a church, I was attending a church called Central Church of God, and they were about 5,000 members, and we had about 1,500 singles, and I became the singles administrator for 1,500 singles, and a single parent's pastor for 500 single parents and their families, and here I was, a single parent of, of a 14 and 15-year-old, <laughs> um, and then Derek Prince moved his ministry from South Florida to Charlotte, and the U.S. director contacted me like five times um, and kept making offers. Please come to work for me. I need an administrative assistant, a, an executive assistant for my office and because she didn't come up here with us from Florida. And so finally the Lord spoke to me and he said, two years, give them two years because then you will step into your own ministry. And I was like, well, I'll give them the two years, but I do not want to step into my own ministry. <laughs> But that's what happened, and, and, and God brought me through and, and um, just opened doors unbelievably. And I always say we had this 80th birthday celebration for Derek and 50th year in ministry, and he and Ruth came over to me, his wife, and they, like, did this prophetic act with pr pretend scissors. We just cut you from the cares of the world, even a weekly paycheck, 
and I wasn't real sure if I was being commissioned or fired, you know. <laughs> but they told me I could stay with them as long as I wanted to and even hire somebody so that uh, if I was out on a ministry trip that, and I was you know, a couple days longer that they would still be able to take care of things, but that they would never let me go because they loved me and, and they uh, appreciated what I did for them. And it was just a real amazing thing. But truly, it was two years later that the girl who had been in South Florida and, and had had that position moved up to Charlotte, and the Lord said, that's why I told you it would be two years. You need to give her job back to her. <laughs> and been stepping out and doing my own thing ever since then, and it's been 26 years. I just turned 66 on Election Day, November 3rd, and, and I've been doing my own ministry now for, like I said, 26 years. So I'm, I'm telling you what, God directs your path no matter what. And if you'll let go of the past, I didn't hold on to, oh, look what happened at PTL, you know, and so I'm not going to work for any other ministry because ministries are terrible or, you know, people there can't be trusted. And then I went to work for Jimmy Swaggart and that happened again, you know, um, you, you've got to let go of the past. And that's just a very important thing for us to remember. You know, I have a dear friend of mine uh, that she and her husband had some really severe problems in, in their marriage. And, you know, bless her, she forgave, she forgot, and went forward. And now they're together and have an amazing ministry to couples to help them. I love what Rick Joyner says, in the very areas where you've been wounded, once you're healed, you then have authority to heal others. And, of course, the Word of God says it uh, this way, Satan's defeated by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And so whatever you are going through or have been through can become an area of authority for you. Don't give up just because you've had some difficulty, especially in this season. And I had an experience recently where the Lord came to me and he kind of reminded me about Peter. And when he went to Peter and he said to Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, well, you're the son of God, you know, you're the Christ. And, and Jesus said to him, you know, flesh and blood hasn't, hasn't revealed that to you, but my Father in heaven has. And he didn't stop there. It wasn't just like, oh, I, I want to know who Peter says that I am. He went on to tell Peter who he said that he was. And so that's what I feel like this morning the Lord says he's going to do for each and every one of you. He's going to let you know who you are. But you've got to quit arguing <laughs> with him about it. And you have got to quit word cursing yourself. Um, because sometimes we can talk ourselves right out of what God has called us to. And second-guessing ourselves, second-guessing God, and everything else. And the Lord says, again, let it go. Let the past go, because he knows who you are. He knows who he called you to be, and it's not the problems that you've had. <laughs> it, he's called you to be a son or daughter of the Most High God and to walk in the fullness of his power. And those of us who are in this church building right now, God has called to bring in the lost, to bring in those who don't know him. You know, I was watching television. I was really getting upset seeing all the people that were out there uh, burning buildings, upturning cars, rioting, and everything else. And I'm like, oh, those stupid millennials <laughs> and everything. And the Lord said, stop it. Close your mouth. Stop it right now. Stop word cursing my millennials. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he said, you know how to handle what's going on in the world because you've got me. They don't because they don't have me. And he said, that's my harvest field. If you're so smart, go into the harvest field and go get them. <laughs> and, you know, the prophetic has, the prophetic people, I should say, have really been uh, promising for a long time that we're going to see even a billion soul harvest. A billion's a lot of people, <laughs> let me tell you what. But they still keep standing in the way and trying to be stars. And nobody's a star except Jesus. And the Lord told me that if the prophetic people are so all-fired prophetic, they need to figure out where the harvest fields are ripe at and start sending forth the evangelist. And some of you, God has called to be evangelist in this time. In fact, all of us are called to win souls. The Bible says in, in Proverbs that he who wins souls is wise. I'm sure that means she who wins souls as well. But <laughs> So if we win souls, we're wise. We don't have to be an evangelist to do that. 
but in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in your own family. You know, my mother was a very mean woman because she did not fulfill her purpose, call, and destiny. But she had traveled with Amy Semple McPherson, and then she had her own ministry when she was a child. She was one of Amy Semple McPherson's child evangelist protégés. And thousands of people would come to hear my mother when she was five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten years old. But because she laid aside all of that, she became a miserable woman that just talked mean to people, especially her family. She was physically abusive. She held loaded guns to my head, to my stomach. <laughs> um, she even was giving me pills that almost killed me at one point. And I mean, Jesus really spared my life because even though I was a small child, he told me what was going on. And he said, every time she gives it to you, just hide it under your tongue. And because she would make sure that I showed her that I had it and it was gone in my mouth. And then he said, take it out and hide it in the couch. And I did that, and I started getting better. But, Je I mean, literally, Jesus came to me. Um, I could see him, and he talked to me, and he said, if you keep taking that, she's going to be arrested for murder and be in prison the rest of her life. And he said, and if she catches you that you did this, just tell her that. So one day, finally, she said to me, what are you doing? You're doing something with those pills. And she had accidentally caught me out of the corner of her eye, putting my hand down on the couch. And she reached down in there and pulls out the whole handful of pills. And she started yelling at me. And I said, Jesus told me to do that. And she goes, what? And I said, he came and he said that um, I would die if I kept taking them and that you would go to prison for the rest of your life. And he didn't want that to happen to you because he loves you. <laughs> and she just looked so scared that she backed up against the wall. And when she hit the wall, all of a sudden, then she turned around and she ran the other direction. But that's how, how Jesus can spare us, even from situations like that. Even though I was a small child, that's what he did. And so, anyway, she did all kinds of things. She would, you know, throw me all over the place, grab me by the hair, the head, slam me all over. And uh, my sister once told me, she says, why do you treat our mother so good when she hates you the most and treats you the worst of any of us in the family? And all I could answer was, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I went to Sunday school. The Bible says, honor your mother and father that your days will be long upon the earth. And, and she said, well, it, nothing's worth being treated like that, she said. It's just terrible how she treats you. But you know what? The Lord let me lead her back to him before she died. And that's a real kick in the devil's head. And I forgave her. I felt sorry for her all those years. I could see that she was a tormented woman. Listen, when somebody is that miserable to you, they're even more miserable to themselves. <laughs> And, and so it's not that I accepted that as the right behavior, because it certainly was not. But God had me forgive her. And I'll tell you what, one thing the Lord showed me in the past couple of years, that a lot of the young people in our country are dying far too young because they are not honoring their mothers and fathers. Because the Bible says, honor your mother and father that your days will be long upon the earth. So the enemy has chosen to try to turn our generations now against their parents and for a lot less things than what I went through sometimes just for absolutely nothing except well they're your parents and they're stupid <laughs> and I'm telling you what I don't care how old you are and what you've been through if you are my age I'm 66 or older and you are through bad things with your parents and even if they're dead or alive doesn't matter you need to forgive them so that your days will be long upon the earth and so that you can go forward and and if what you think what they did was wrong then let show me how it's done <laughs> you know uh, we all do just the best that we can and, and I'm not saying again to approve of anything bad that's been done to you but just to let it go let go of the past whatever it is and I, and I just had a feeling that this morning there might be some of you who have gone through things like that and that God was saying that it's time to forgive, time to forget, whether it's parents or uh, whether it was, you know, there are some people that have even been sexually abused by people in the church and everything else. Whatever it is that's in your past that you need to forgive, it's time to forgive it so that you can go on and be free of that. Because a lot of times people are holding things against people that are dead. And you know what that does? 
you might as well go stand by the grave and have handcuffs on you to that grave marker because it's you that's being held captive, not them. And that's why we need to let it go so that we can be free and so that we can go forward to do what God has called us to do. And, and I, I just know that, you know, Jesus has a good plan for us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. And he wants to reveal his plans to you. But if we're still trapped in the rehearsal, the broken record rehearsal of our past, we don't even have the ability to hear what he's trying to tell us or to see what he's trying to show us. So we've got time on our hands <laughs> during this whole pandemic and everything. And one of the things was that at the beginning of this year, being 2020, we were told, well, we're going to have 2020 vision, which means the most perfect vision we can. Well, we didn't have very good vision to, enough to see what was happening, did we? None of us knew that it was going to be this big pandemic. Even, you know, famous prophets that I know of didn't see this. Some of us had glimpses of the, of the possibilities. Um, the only two prophets I know of that actually saw this and prophesied it was Bobby Connor and I think Chuck Pierce. Um, I, I know for sure it was Bobby Connor because he wrote about it in what's called his shepherd's rod last year. And all they said was that there was going to be a pandemic. And Rick Joyner has been prophesying for many years that there was going to be some type of virus that was going to come. Uh, but he didn't know it was now. You know, I talked to him about it. And at the beginning of this year, all I knew was the Lord told me I had gotten a $200 check, and that's all the money I had. And the Lord told me, go out to these discount stores and buy up all kinds of food that has long shelf life and go to this other one that they had frozen things that, that uh, were very cheap. And I don't know why, but in Rock Hill, we have these places like that uh, where you can get even canned goods, 10 for a dollar or whatever. And he said, oh, and by the way, get a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and, and so that's what I did. And I had no idea that I wasn't going to be able to go on the road. Um, what I thought was, wow, it's going to be a rough winter and people aren't even going to be holding meetings. I just was thinking of it in, in natural terms. But that's what the Lord told me. And then, of course, everything was shut down. So now it's a real miracle that I lasted throughout this whole time period because my work is this. I go on the road and I teach at churches, Christian groups all over the country, um, schools of ministry and that type of thing. But everything was shut down. I wasn't able to go anywhere. But one thing that I've learned over the years is you pay attention to what the word says. You know, it, it contains everything pertaining to life and godliness. And, and in Malachi 3, it talks about tithing. And it says that if you do this, you know, try me and then see. But if you do this, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for you. There won't be room enough to contain. And also, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. So I had legal ground to stand on. And, and I was just saying, I'm a tither. I'm a giver. So in Jesus' name, I just proclaim and declare, money cometh now from the north, south, east, and west. And God, you're going to provide for me because that's your promise according to your word. And I spoke it out. You know, this is a year of declaration, by the way. Actually, we're in 10 years of that on the Jewish calendar, the 5780s, and we're at 5781. And so the most powerful thing to declare is the word of God. And so begin to declare the word of God. And like I said, it, you know, everything that, that pertains to life and godliness is in this word. And so um, if, if you want to survive a pandemic financially, do what it says to do. Because there's nothing in there that says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and I'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for you, unless your nation is in a pandemic or your, your elections go crazy. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like that in there. There's no disclaimer. God doesn't have disclaimers to his promises. But what he does do is he says, if you do this, I'll do this. Even salvation, you know, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and get born again, then you can come to heaven with me. Uh, and even uh, as far as for our nation, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I'll heal their land. But we got to do the, the if we do part. <laughs> 
and then he'll do his part. And he's a man of his word. He keeps his promises. And, you know, one of the things that I found out about this particular year on the Jewish calendar, they, well, all of their years, they have names for the numbers and so forth. So like I said, the 5780s portion is about declaring. It's an, uh, the sign or pictograph of it is the open mouth of declaring. But the one, because it's 5781, the one is a silent number. And I was like, what about that, Jesus? Because that sounds opposite of declare and then Shh, be quiet, you know. <clears throat> and he held his finger up like this and he put it up to his mouth like a one. And then he went, shh, listen, it's time to listen before you speak. And just like I did, you only do or say the things the father says to do or say. And then he also said, by the way, you can have a voice without even opening your mouth. And I was like, how so, Lord? And he began to explain to me, <clears throat> excuse me, how that through the years, always during a time of war or disturbances or whatever, uh, there's like a renaissance time period that comes. Like if you see a piece of art in one of the museums in Washington, D.C., you'll know, oh, that was a World War II era painting. Or look at it and you go, oh, that was from World War I era or whatever era it might have been. And the Lord says, in this season, I'm going to pour out my anointing uh, upon my skilled artisans. And he said, and my skilled writers. He says, because even in writing, you know, there are certain writings that you can attribute to certain time periods uh, where things were going on. And so in silence, we can still speak. We can speak through the paintings, the um pottery, the writings that we do. And he even explained to me that, you know, part of that even was like our Declaration of Independence. And look, that's still speaking to us down through the many years. And so we don't have to be out in the streets hollering and carrying on, but we can speak even through the written word, write letters to your senators, write letters to your governors, and, and take part in determining what's going to happen in the world today. You know, even write to them about what's going on with the elections. Like, this is not right. We want it fully examined. We want it fully investigated. Um, and use the authority that God has given to you to do that. And of course, always when there's an election, go vote. Don't complain to me if something bad happens with the people that were voted for if you haven't even gotten out there. <laughs> we don't have a right to complain if we haven't participated. And so it's important for us to use the voice God has given to us, even the silent voice that he's given to us. I don't know about you, but there are certain people that, that get mad. They don't have to yell at all. All they have to do is give you that look. <laughs> you, you know, moms, you can give your kids that look, and they know, even in your silence, like, oops, I better straighten out, right? And, uh, and so, like I said, we don't have to be hollering and carrying on, um, but we can use the authority God has given to us in many other ways too. So like I said, what I do is I travel and I do this um, in order to earn my living. And so all of that was shut down. I, went, I actually did pretty good all through the year. I did the Zoom meetings, you know, you know what Zoom is? Um, so I did some Zoom meetings even for businessmen's groups out in California and so forth where I usually go in person to do it uh, for some prayer groups uh, for some churches and so forth. Not everybody was really understanding how to do that. It's taken a lot for people to get used to, to handling their services and so forth in that way, but they had to. We had to make changes, folks, in order to still function. And, and, and so that was a good thing. That's one of the good things that came out of this whole uh, pandemic thing. And so anyway, um, about two, three months ago, um, things started to open up and I started getting like invitations to actually go someplace in person and, um, and do meetings. So I was down in Foley, Alabama and y'all remember that hurricane that came in down there that was pretty bad. So I was ministering at this one church the morning that it was about to make landfall and the pastor came in and he says, you gotta shut this down now and get on the road <laughs> because they say that the hurricane is starting to come on shore. Well, we were only 26 blocks from the shore, so I listened to him. 
And I, and I was like, oh man, there's a couple more meetings I was going to do that shuts it down. That shuts down that area of finances. But I have four more up at the top of Alabama. So I'm just going to go on up there, go ahead and get in a hotel and, and be ready. Well, by the day before those four meetings were going to start, I heard from the three churches. They all had an outbreak of COVID and said they had to cancel their meetings. And the one lady that had a, a woman's gathering, a city-wide women's gathering in her home, she hurt her back and had to have surgery. So that shut that down. So whatever money I made down in Foley, I needed to use to now go across country just to get home. So I'm sitting at home, and a couple weeks go by, and I get a letter from my apartment complex put on my door, pay up by the end of the month or get out. <laughs> And I was like, I didn't know they could do that in the pandemic. I'd been paying up all year, you know? And I mean, God would, God was just so good to me. Somebody would think of me and send me 25, 50, 100. A couple of times, um, I even received checks for 500 or 1,000. And it would be right at the right time to pay my rent, to pay my utilities or whatever. But now people knew I was back on the road, so they weren't sending me anything. So I was like, I am sunk, Lord, you know? Um, because they want me out by the end of the month. So the day before the end of the month, I think it was October 30th, um, I get a phone call. And I, meanwhile, like I said, I was just praying, God, you know, your word says, and I've been doing it, and I just call money in from the north, south, east, and west. Lord, you know who it is that has it and, and who would uh, count it a blessing to bless somebody else. You know, I always count it a blessing when I can bless somebody else. And God, I just ask you that those who can afford it would think of me and, and send it. I get a phone call from somebody. And, oh, and by the way, I had written some words uh, and sent it out, and one was on the Elijah list. So I get a phone call from a lady I haven't heard from in 10 or 15 years. And she says, oh, I'm so glad I found you. I saw your word on the Elijah list. My husband and I were thinking about you. We just recently sold a piece of property, and we wanted to send you part of the tithe off of it. And she said, so before I go any further, I've got to have an address real quick or tell me how I can send it. And, and I'm thinking, well, I'm supposed to be out tomorrow. Maybe you better send it on, <laughs> on Cash App or Venmo, you know. <laughs> and so I explained that to her, and, and she sent me $1,200, which not only paid my rent, but it, it was enough that I could pay the tithe and the late fees and everything else off of it from somebody I hadn't heard from in 10 or 15 years. You see how God is so good. And it was like truly the 11th hour kind of a deal. But look at how he takes care of us. And, and so I'm telling you, you can trust him. When you do the if you do part, <laughs> he'll do the if he does part. <laughs> and, and so, you know, but what had happened is before this, when I was sitting there and not complaining, but just kind of crying out, I said, you know, God, I can't just pull money out of thin air. And he said, yes, you can. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's not God saying that. And he said, yes, you can. And I said, how so? And he said, look. And I looked in front of me, and I could see a, in the spirit, I could see a $100 bill just hanging out in thin air. And he says, well, what are you waiting for? Grab it. <laughs> so I reached up, and I went like that, you know. As a prophetic act, I, I grabbed for what I saw. And he says, well, now, is that going to pay your rent, or don't you need more? And I said, well, I need more. <laughs> And he says, and you better just keep on grabbing until you have enough. So it, by faith, I just kept reaching up and saying, okay, I'm pulling the money out of thin air like that. And four hours later, I got that phone call. And so the Lord told me, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And listen to this, the evidence of things unseen. So I didn't see it, but it was in the spirit. And I reached up and I pulled it down. And... And, you know, God says, if you will do that, you know, if you have a need this morning, whether it's financial, what it might be, just reach up and pull it out. So let's just do a little practice session right now. Um, don't feel stupid because we're all going to look stupid anyway. But <laughs> I mean, I just did it for you. So you have no right to not feel stupid either. <laughs> all right. So just reach up like that and just whatever it is that you have need of, just say, God, I'm, I receive that. I receive that. I receive that healing. I receive that deliverance for that family member. I receive those finances, God, in Jesus' name. I receive it. And just know that he's true to his word. Again, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. And by the way, you know, he reminded me that 
there was the prophet that only struck the ground three times, so that's all the battles he won, and the next one he got killed in. <laughs> so if you need more, don't stop pulling, <laughs> but keep reaching out and pulling down what you have need of whenever, you know, and if you want to do it personally, quietly, by yourself, that's fine too. I'm just kind of sharing with you what happened with me, and I know that, you know, God is a man of his word, and, and he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't just do things for me and not for you. I'm not that special, <laughs> you know, and, and you're special, and he will do it for you too. And the Lord just wants you to know, don't give up. Don't give up on the dreams that he has put in your heart. Don't give up on your family members being saved. You know, don't give up um, on your children growing up and becoming the people that they're supposed to be. Don't give up on the fact that there are loved ones who are unsaved that are going to be saved. Don't give up on it. Keep on pressing in. Because even in the most impossible of times, things are impossible. And, you know, there's still hope. There is still hope. And the Lord showed me years ago, like I was a small child going to our Baptist Sunday school, and they did this whole teaching on the giants and the promised land and, and everything. And I don't know why, but when they were telling about it and they were showing the flannel gram pictures of it, I thought, well, how come they didn't like see the big fruit just, just past the giants? Why didn't they realize those giants were there to scare everybody else off and keep it for them? That's why God had the giants there. So I raised my hand in class, and the, and the teacher said, yes, Joni. And I said, well, why didn't they just uh, understand that God put the giants there to save the fruit for them? And the teacher went like this, like, what, what? Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> you know, and I just couldn't understand that. And the Lord spoke to me through what we're going through now. He said, tell my people to get their eyes off the giants and get it on the fruit. It's time to look at the fruit and realize I put the giants in the land to protect that fruit for them. And, and so one morning I woke up and I just heard these words, there's still hope. There's still hope. And the Lord reminded me of a scripture, Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope, you know, we serve the God of hope. He's the God of all hope. We don't serve a mean God. We serve the God of hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's what he's doing. He's filling us with hope. Also, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So be joyful. Just laugh at stuff. Laugh it off. Laugh off even the junk. You know, sometimes stuff happens and I start getting frustrated and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, something really good must be about to happen for the enemy to do this. And I just start laughing. That really torques the enemy off. <laughs> He'll run the other way. <laughs> and, but realize that, you know, he tru God truly has given us the ability and the power to make it through any circumstance. So it was just like through the Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur time period. And listen, I'm, listen I just want to say this. Don't, don't get upset with me about this. I do not like pressure people to go back into all the Jewish root stuff and everything else. But I, I like to study a little bit of history. The Bible's really clear because even the disciples were told, don't keep putting this stuff on people because Jesus came uh, to fulfill that, and now let it go, all right? But I, again, I do like to study some things historically. But so during that time period, I started having all these experiences and words that the Lord gave to me, and I would wake up, and he would give me another word to send out, and a lot of those things got put on the Elijah list, but I put them out over my thing too. Well, this one morning, I woke up, and I literally heard this really loud it's what woke me up in fact throughout my whole house and it was like somebody cupped their hands like this and they said help has arrived and i was like what i mean it woke me out of a sound sleep and i stood straight up beside my bed i 
I thought my son was there and I thought something bad had happened that I missed and he was telling me help was there, a fire truck or whatever, but my son wasn't even home. And I was like, well, that was really strange. Maybe somebody outside my apartment window, you know, did it because I live in an apartment complex. So I went back to bed and all of a sudden I heard it again, this time even louder. Help has arrived. And it was a man's voice, really strong and really urgent. And I sat straight up and I was like, oh, this is like when Samuel heard the Lord call his name. So I just sat there like Samuel had done and I said, okay, God, speak, your servant is listening. And he began to download scriptures to me about the Holy Spirit being the helper. And I, I knew those scriptures. And he says, my Holy Spirit is here to bring you help. My Holy Spirit is the paraclete. And I remembered, you know, studying about him being a paraclete. Well, a paraclete is not just one that comes alongside, but literally it attaches itself to you. Like, you, you know those old suitcases that the buckle goes one way and then it goes the other and it clamps down and locks something in place? And he showed me that's what the Holy Spirit was doing with us. He was clamping himself onto us, holding on to us, and he was right there to be our helper in this time period and he's not going to let go. The helper is here. He's going to help us through all these circumstances, mentally, physically, spiritually, in every way. Everything that he is, we can have. And, you know, the word of God says to us that the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is on the inside of us. That's the Holy Spirit. So why aren't we trying to get access to that? And so even when I started not feeling good a couple different times, I thought, oh, no, it's the COVID, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, no, spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, you know, just come up and push that thing out in Jesus' name. I refuse that. I refuse COVID. I refuse death. I refuse difficulty in breathing. I refuse any virus in Jesus' name. And, and I speak healing over myself. So the first three months, actually, of the pandemic thing, I had a sore throat for three months. I've never had a sore throat for three months. Who knows? Maybe that was the COVID at the time. I don't know. And I just cried out to the Lord about it. I had a dream one night, and there was this giraffe. Now, I love giraffes. For whatever the reason, I just think they're majestic. They're beautiful. This giraffe came, and, and he said, hey, come on. You want to ride? And he bends down, and I get up on his back and you know, have my arms around his neck. And he says, isn't it a beautiful day? And it was like fall in the dream and, and the leaves were crunchy. He was walking on the leaves and everything. And I said, oh, I just love that sound of the leaves crunching like that. And he says, look, see that school over there? That's where I live. And I said, oh, how neat. And, and I said, can we go around it and see it? And he said, sure. And he said, is there anything wrong with you? Your voice sounds funny. And I says, I've had a sore throat for three months. And he goes, I can fix that. I mean, who has a bigger throat than a giraffe? Just saying. <laughs> so we go around to the back of this school and come to find out he lives in the basement of it. And there's this three huge garage doors there. So he leaves me off and he says, I'm going to go get something for you. So he goes and he goes into the basement and he brings something out and, and I swallow it. It's like a tea or something like that. You know, when I woke up ever since then, I haven't had a sore throat. <laughs> God healed me in my sleep. And I thought it was such a fun dream anyway, you know. I, I kept thinking, oh, I want to see that giraffe again, but I don't want to have a sore throat in order to do it, you know. Um, but, you know, God can do all kinds of things for us, whether it's healing, uh, giving us a fun dream to help to change our outlook, whatever it might be. And I just want to say, even with what's going on with this whole election thing, now, I'm a Trumper, so you might as well know that. <laughs> I just don't feel, I don't know how anybody can't be because I'm totally against abortion. And I just feel like that every time there's an election that God tests the hearts in America. And if we vote for somebody that stands for abortion, we're responsible for every abortion that's done while they're in office. So I'm not going to vote for somebody, especially in this election where the where Biden and Kamala Harris not only stand for abortion, but they stand for uh, post-abortion where you can kill a child up until they're two years old. Now, that's insanity. You know, abortion itself is insanity, 
let alone their belief in it, that you can kill a child up till they're two years old? Oh, heck no, you know? Um, and so I'm just saying, you know, we have got to pay attention to the things that people stand for, I, whether you'd like their personality or not, you know? I mean, like President Trump, I would just like to write to him and say, please run your tweets past me and let me edit them before you put them out. <laughs> You know, even his wife has said that. She said that on a television program, and I, I, I laughed. I was, and he laughed, too, because she was asked, is there anything about your husband you don't like? And she says, well, his tweets. <laughs> she said, I asked him to let me write them, but he won't. <laughs> but, you know, it's really important for us to understand that there's a lot that has happened that it truly is proven that there's been some false stuff done. And we need to be praying for Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, to reveal the truth so that nothing like that happens again. Because I'll tell you what, uh, and, I, and I just want to say this, there's a couple of presidents that were elected in my lifetime that I honestly thought America was done for and wouldn't exist anymore, but we're still here. So regardless, I believe that God can do that again, but we're in such serious times, and we've got to remember what Jesus said about these times. They'd be worse than ever before or ever more would be. And we've got to take a look at the Bible. You know, when people say, oh, we're just going to turn into this wonderful panacea type of a thing. No, we're not. The Bible says that you know, there's going to be really bad stuff that happens. There's even going to be the Battle of Armageddon. So we've got to get toughened up and realize that we're going to have to make it through some stuff. And, you know, don't want to burst anybody's bubble. I've never been a believer in the rapture. Just me personally, you know, you can believe in it if you want to, but I personally don't believe in it. Uh, number one, it was, that whole thing was started by this girl that was 16 years old that had a dream. Talk about cuckoo prophetic. A lot of people have dreams and all of a sudden they try to make scripture out of it. So she had this dream about it and then she told a, a priest about it who then made it be um, this teaching in the church. That's where it came from. And I didn't know that at the time, but since I've been doing my doctorate and so forth, found that out in all of my studies. And the Bible says, he who endures to the end will be saved. I think we're going to have to make it through some stuff. I don't think we can do a beam me up Scotty deal. You know, again, if you want to believe that and that makes you feel at peace and at comfort, go ahead. But what the Lord showed me, even when they did the Left Behind series of books and movies, I felt like the Lord told me, Stuff like that is what's going to make people shake their fists towards heaven and turn against me in the end. He says, because my Bible, my word says that there will be a great falling away at the end. So what's the purpose of having a great big huge revival and bringing in a billion soul harvest if we're going to teach false doctrine and cause people to fall away? We've got to be telling people the truth so that we're ready to fight. We've got to become a church that's ready to fight. You know, the people that died during 9-11 weren't zapped out of here, were they? And, and that was, you know, their tribulation. Of course, I don't know about you, but my life's pretty much been tribulation. <laughs> and I ain't been zapped out yet. I'm <laughs> just saying. So I just want to say to you, we've got to toughen up. We've got to quit being spiritual wimps. We've got to quit saying, oh, we're going to get out of here before anything bad happens. Because that ain't happened yet. And y'all have been through bad stuff, I'm sure. I know some of the bad stuff. But I'm, I just want to encourage you that in the midst of it, we'll be victorious. And God has put us here for a purpose so that we would be able to bring others into the kingdom. You know, even just like that thing with the tithing, it says that we will prosper so much that all the nations will call us blessed. So we're not going to have to take the mark of the beast. And even when we don't, we're going to be blessed and the other nations are going to go, well, how can that be when you didn't take the mark of the beast? See, so we're going to be going through some stuff and be around here for it. We're not going to be zapped out because God's going to use us as examples. They're going to say, wow, how can you have joy and a smile on your face when all of this stuff is going on? And, and the good part is, you know, we've read the end of the book, as they say, and we know who wins. <laughs> God does, and because he does, we do. Um, but we've just watched too much Star Trek or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bring me up, Scotty. <laughs> um, so 
the Lord just wants you to know that you are his, that he does have good plans for you. You are safe in the palm of his hand, no matter what happens. You, you're going to have restoration for the years even that the locust and canker worm has eaten. But you got to quit looking at the past. You know, quit looking at the junk that's happened and look forward and see Jesus and see what he can accomplish. Quit complaining because the Israelites missed out on their promised land because they complained. And, and just keep going forward. Uh, be cautious of the words of your mouth because truly life and death are in the power of the tongue. Y'all know, I've told you the story about my hamster, you know, and how that, you know, I got mad at him because he bit me and I pointed my finger at him and I said, you're a dead meat buster. And an hour later, the television fell on him and he was dead meat. <laughs> So life and death truly are in the power of the tongue, and we've got to watch out what we say. And, you know, thank God I didn't say that to one of my kids. <laughs> Just saying. I'd be speaking to you from Zoom from a prison somewhere. <laughs> I got my coffee back here somewhere. There we go. I had a... Um, one more little experience I wanted to, to share with you about that was really a beautiful thing. Um, I had, you know, y'all know who Don Potter is, the worship guy from Morningstar? Um, so a friend of mine and I had gone over to Don and Christine's house recently for dinner. And Don said the Lord had been speaking to him about the crystal sea and that there was something about it that was power. Um, in that, you know, in what the Lord speaks about in Revelation about the crystal sea. And lo and behold, the Lord gave me even a poem about it. Let's see if I can pull it up. Um, no, it won't pull up while I'm in here. It must not be a good signal. Um, but the Lord gave me even this poem about it, and he began to show me how that uh, up in heaven, God forms songs. You know, there was an old song by Barry Manilow, I Write the Songs That Make the Whole World Sing. I just really, every time I heard that, I felt like that was Jesus saying that. You know, not that Barry is Jesus, <laughs> but that it was, it was a song that came from Jesus to remind us that he's the one that writes the songs that makes the whole world sing. And so anyway, in this dream vision type thing that I had, the Lord was showing me the crystal sea and how that... Um, there would be lightnings and thunderings like the word says that come from the throne and it would hit this crystal sea and fire would be in the water and go around like this and all of a sudden there would come this scroll up out of it that would be sheets of music and then they would you know be rolled up and an angel would grab it and the angel with a trumpet and put it in the trumpet and go Doo -doo, like that and that song would be sent down to earth. I mean, it was just an amazing um, dream and everything. And I believe that even in this time period, that, I, like I was talking about, being a renaissance time period, God's going to send us songs in this time. That's what even prophetic worship is all about. If any of you have been to the IHOP up in Kansas City, Mike Bickle's IHOP, the International House of Prayer, not pancakes, by the way. <laughs> um, but that's what they do. And they sing prophetic songs, songs that just come forth at that very moment you know, from, from the heavens. And so listen, because the Spirit will even speak those songs to you. You can sing those songs over your children, over each other. Um, but the Holy Spirit is your helper, and he's here to help you, and he's here to bring peace to you. He's here even to bring witty inventions to you so that you can survive through the pandemic. There are people that are going to invent things and be extremely wealthy in this time. Do you know that during the Depression, that's when some of the big, huge companies that we know of today that have been so successful were even formed? There, there's always an answer, a financial answer, even when something like that goes on. So don't give up. Um, Tammy Faye Baker used to sing a song, Don't Give Up on the Brink of Your Miracle. And, you know, truly, like I said, God can even bring things out of thin air. So, you know, just receive that help has arrived, <laughs> the helper has arrived for you, and 
you know, ignore the giants, realize that they were put in the land to protect the fruit for you, and understand that, you know, there's still hope. No matter who's in the White House, <laughs> there's still hope. And God is still on the throne. I ain't heard no thump yet, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I didn't hear him fall off. That would be a big thump, wouldn't it? <laughs> Um, but God is still on the throne. They can't impeach him, all right? He's not going to get impeached. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still as powerful. The blood of Jesus hasn't been thinned out over the years. It's still as powerful. The name of Jesus is still as powerful as it always was, and, and we do have hope because we serve the God of all hope. Amen? So, Lord, I thank you for each and every one here, and I thank you, Lord, that no matter what's going on, that we have hope in you and that you, God, are an awesome God. And I'm just hearing that old song, our God is an awesome God. He reigns with power and might. We thank you that you do, Lord, and that you're going to take care of each and every one of us during this time and our loved ones, that you'll perfect all that concerns us. And Lord, we just shake off any of the junk from the world. Um, we refuse to immerse ourselves in even the news reports, and instead we choose to immerse ourselves in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I remember when I was uh, a young single mother, you know, everybody was, uh, there was a lot of talk about um, demon possession and stuff like that. It was all the teachings were coming out about how that we could do deliverance and so forth. And I was like, ooh, I really want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You know, everybody's worried about what they're possessed by. I want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. And I just said, Holy Spirit, possess me. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm not for sale in Jesus' name. You know, don't let anybody try to buy me with their money and, and all that other kind of stuff and their promises. But God, please keep me safe. Please keep me pure. Um, you know, the word even tells us that we need to pray those things so that we aren't caught up uh, with the world and its cares. And so God can keep you from sin. And he can, and if, you know what, if you've done something, he can forgive you and save you. All you got to do is ask him. And so I just want to say, if there's anybody here like that today, and you haven't been saved, and you haven't given your life to the Lord, you can be saved today. You want to just raise your hand and we'll pray for you, send a, um, some of our ministry team around you here to do that, um, then let's just do that. Because Jesus is a loving and caring God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together, the triune Spirit of God. And they don't want to see anybody lost in this time period. Amen? So, um, is it okay? Just go ahead and pray for some folks. So even when I was ministering, I saw a few people and felt like that the, the Lord just wanted to give encouragement. Uh, so there's a man back on the back row with the beard and the hat on. The, yes, what's your first name? Raymond? Brandon. Okay. And who do you have with you there? Okay. And what relation? Friend? Okay, so Brandon, okay. So Lord, I thank you for Brandon, and I just lift him up to you, and I thank you, God, that uh, you have your hand upon him. And I saw the Lord standing right behind you with his hands on your shoulders, and he just wants you to know you're going to be okay, that his hands are on you, and that I just he's going to heal your heart um, of the pain that you've gone through in your lifetime. And, and God says, he made you to be strong, um, but you have such a tender heart. And, and the Lord says, he loves your tender heart. Uh, sometimes your tender heart gets you in trouble because you have mercy on people you shouldn't have mercy on. <laughs> but God says, he's going to give you greater wisdom and even discernment to keep you out of those type of situations in the future. But that he, he does have good plans for you. You're never going to be like the three-piece suit, you know, kind of guy. That's not who you were made to be because he made you to be the type of person you are so you could reach the kind of people that you need to reach. And, and the Lord says that he loves you and that this is going to be a year of great restoration for you. 
He said, dream big and write it down. Um, Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4 says, write the vision and make it plain that they may run who read it. So dream big, you know, write down the things that you want to accomplish and you'll see them begin to come to pass. Thank you, Lord. Man. So, uh, with what I said, I feel like the Lord just was speaking to me, and he said to give everybody the opportunity right now to lay down the past just as a prophetic act, that if you feel like you need to lay down some stuff in the past, even to just stand up right now, just as an act of faith, that there are things you need to forget, uh, that there are things you need to go forward from, let's just do that. You know, I know that even when God speaks things like that to me, I might not think of it at the moment, but later I might. So I'm just going to go ahead and stand up myself and to say, Lord, if there's anything in my past that I need to let go that's holding me back, in Jesus' name, I let it go right now. Just even go like this. I let it go. In Jesus' name, I let it go. And I just say, Lord, I receive all that you have for me. In Jesus' name, in its place. Help me keep my focus towards you and towards going forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, the, the Bible says to delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And, and I just sense just a joy that he's like just pouring down. I just was seeing like this golden oil come down over you all. You're going to walk in a greater joy than you have in a long time. God's just going to give you joy and peace. There was an old song called Joy Unspeakable and Full of Glory. And I just see him giving you greater joy than ever. Amen. Amen. You ever even go through like a McDonald's drive through and it can be one of two things happen. Either the, the clerk at the window is such a snot that it makes you mad, <laughs> or they're just so bouncy and kind that it, like, it makes your day. And, um, and so the Lord says he wants you to be one of those bouncy, kind people that make somebody else's day. And I tell them when they're like that, too. I'll just say, you know, I just want you to know I appreciate you. God put you where you are because I needed somebody to be full of joy today. <laughs> so um, this couple right here, um, the man with the checkered shirt and the lady with the glasses on your head. Um, what's your first name's? Chris and Rebecca? Okay. Lord, I thank you for Chris and Rebecca, and I thank you for all you're doing in their lives, Lord. Thank you, God. I just felt like the Lord said that there is, he says, behold, I do a new thing, and that this is like uh, a door opening uh, day for you. I just see brand new door opening for you, and God says, walk through it, and don't be afraid, um, because there are great things on the other side, and that I just saw him, like that commercial for Allstate, you're in good hands with Allstate. I just saw you like sitting in his hands like that. And he says, you're in good hands and that he's protected you from, from much. But there's been some losses and he says that he's going to restore, uh, just like that scripture I gave a while ago, he's going to restore what the locust and canker worm has eat, eaten and that this is going to be a banner year for you and just to hold tight to his promises. But I also felt like uh, even that scripture I gave a while ago about Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4 is for you also, just to begin to write down. He said he's given you brand new plans. It's almost like he tore up the old ones. Um, and he says, behold, I do all things new. So it's time to write down the new plans. And as you do, and you're going to go forward, you're going to see the miraculous take place. But the Lord said, one foot in business and one foot in ministry, both for the purpose of the other. And even in even some missions type um, activity that he's going to have you involved in. Amen. Okay, that one light up there is... <laughs>
<laughs> right in my eyeballs. <laughs> None of the others are just that one light. <laughs> thank you, Lord. So, thank you, Lord. Um, so there's two other people off to the side there of you all. The lady with the white and the other man. Yeah, what are your names? Uh, my name is Pal. I'm okay, and you are related? Okay, Hal and Cindy? Okay. So, Lord, I thank you for Hal and Cindy. And, and God said, um, like, I don't really understand this, but he said, I have a surprise for you. And that um, it's going to be a good surprise. It was like opening up a, a, like a jack-in-the-box. <laughs> um, and he says, watch and see. And that uh, even... Uh, this coming week um, and this coming holiday season that he's going to do the impossible, what you think is the impossible. And so uh, don't worry because he's got you. He's got your back um, and he's going to take care of all the circumstances, which are many. But he says he will tie up all the loose ends. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Do you want to leave? Go ahead. I'll give your word to somebody else. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, even sometimes people get up and leave, but if if I had a word for them, I'll still leave it so that they can give it. So I, I wouldn't really give it to somebody else. Just want you to know. I just have a warped sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So there is something about a brook. Uh, and a brook is, you know, like a smaller thing, I believe, than a river, right? And it's where it's like rocky and that kind of thing. Um, but it could be somebody's name, brook. Is there a brook here? Okay, so we'll just go with the brook because that's what he was showing me. And I felt like uh, it related to the scripture um, where it talks about the brook drying up. But the Lord said there have been some dried up brooks that are about to flow with water. So whatever that might mean to somebody that's had, uh, maybe your finances have seemed to dried up and stop, just like what happened with me, the Lord says the water is going to begin to flow again. So uh, there's a lady over here in the red and a gentleman. And so what's your names? Are you together? Okay. And you are Ray and Kathy? Okay. So Lord, I thank you for Ray and Kathy. Um, God says, uh, hold on, because it's going to be a fun ride. Um, that it's like you're at the beginning almost of like a roller coaster. Um, but it's not a bad roller coaster, you know, like of ups and downs. It's it's going to be things that kind of go slow, and then boom, it's going to uh, break through again. But the Lord said it's going to be a fun ride, um, and that you have waited a long time for this, uh, that you have sat back, you've planted many seeds, and you've done many things for many people. Um, you have big hearts uh, for others, and God says that part of your vision even is that you would have more to do more, and so you will. And and God says, uh, there's he's going to bring forth provision for the vision and even for the land, that there's land that it will be done on, and I just see buildings being raised up, roads even being made, and God says the best is yet to come. It was interesting because I even saw uh, a road around this one big barn and it, the barn was full of provision and cars were coming past it almost like uh, a drive through um, McDonald's or whatever and boxes of things were being loaded into people's cars from that barn and the Lord says and again he's going to give you provision for the vision.
to be able to help many. So um, this one on the row right here with the hood up. What's your name? Shannon? Cammon. Cammy? OK. Can you put your hood down just a second so I can see? <laughs> Thank you. So um, God says this is a new time for you, that he's going to give you the courage and the encouragement in this season to get past the heartache that, um, and the lies of the enemy. Um, because I just see that like it's been a broken record rehearsal of condemnation to yourself. And so we just cancel that assignment um, that it had come upon you from the enemy of, of just con condemnation over and over again, like this broken record rehearsal. We just say, enemy, take that back to hell with you. And we refuse it. Uh, we just cleanse her ears and her mind of those things. And we speak blessing over her. We just thank you for her and for the treasure that she is. God says, you have such a tender heart and you're so sensitive that a lot of times you pick up on what is going on around you and it's not you. So just to know that because you're, you're what's called a sensitive. Um, and sensitive people pick up on things in the spirit that don't even belong to them. But sometimes then that causes, I'm like that, it'll cause us to, to think it's about us. Uh, so God says, just refuse that and just say, I say no to that in Jesus' name. And then speak a scripture over yourself. And like you can even pull up on Google positive scriptures to declare over yourself. And, and just begin to speak those scriptures over yourself. I see you like me at your age, uh, where I went through that. And I even went through a lot of um, depression and things like that because I was prophetic and was picking up all this stuff and I didn't know what to do with it. And so I just encourage you um, to get into and find out more about the prophetic gifting because you, it's so strong on you. And you pick up on things others don't pick up on. Like you'll even tell your friends or somebody like, oh, that person's a jerk <laughs> because they're a jerk. Um, and if they would just listen to you, it would save them a lot of trouble. Um, and so God says he wants you to find out about that gift that's been getting you in trouble. Um, because you're not a bad person, you're not a judgmental person, you have a lot of discernment. It's just that maybe you don't say it in the way that would be received. So be cautious how you speak it, uh, because sometimes that's just the only reason why somebody doesn't receive it. Um, but they're not refusing you, they're refusing actually what the Lord is speaking, because it's what the Lord is speaking to you. Um, and that even I see even when you were tiny, um, a tot, you could see that on people. And you just sometimes didn't like them. But that was it. It's like this uh, defense mechanism in you. And, um, and again, it gets you in trouble. But God says he's tired of you getting in trouble for it um, because it is a true gift. And so, again, study up on it and you'll – I wish I had some of my books here. I, I would give you one. Um, are you go here to the church all the time? All right, so if, if you, Scott, if you'll help me remember who she is, I'll send one and you can get it to her, okay? Um, but it's really important um, for you to pay attention to that gift um, because of how the Lord is going to use you in that. He says you're going to save a lot of people's lives even uh, through that awesome anointing that he has on you for discernment and discernment of spirits. You know, see, that's why the enemy will try to shut somebody down that has a prophetic gift, even to, like, scare them. Like, I would even have demonic visitations at night. It was to make me so scared of that gift that I would refuse it instead of use it. Because the enemy is a jerk. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, Lord, I just thank you for each and every one here, and I just ask you to continue to be with them. Oh, actually, there's, um, I didn't minister to you too, did I? Right here, the guy in the green shirt, um, girl in the, yeah, you too. What's your first names? Autumn and Scott. Okay. 
yeah, I saw you all a while ago, and I was going to give you a word, and then I got sidetracked a little bit. Um, I just felt like that the Lord said, welcome to the next level. Um, and I just see God bringing you up to the next level, even spiritually speaking. But Rick Joyner, my pastor, says new levels, new devils. Like there's always greater warfare when God does bring you up to the next place. But no need to worry because God's equipped you to handle it. Um, and I see the Lord like even sending you out to different places. And, and God says, uh, just like uh, to the other couple that I ministered to a while ago, one foot in business and one foot in ministry, both for the purpose of the other. Um, but in particular, Scott, I see you with an evangelistic anointing to minister in particular to young men. And that God says you're going to be responsible for bringing many young men into the kingdom and even to mentor them. Amen. And for you, I just such a strong prayer warrior anointing you know just that god has put you two together to be this perfect power pack for his purposes but he's going to perfect those things that concern you as well like this is a new season financially and everything else it's it's going to be awesome amen so, Lord, I thank you for each and every one here and just ask you that you would continue to pour out your spirit on, in, and through your people here. I thank you for this church, this group of people. Y'all just don't know. I mean, I've told people all over the country, there's this awesome group of people <laughs> and, and talked about you and just how precious you all are and what a gift you are even to the rest of the body of Christ around you and how that you have stood so strong even in the midst of a lot of warfare. And again, that warfare is because of the call that God has on you. So don't forget to hold on to those promises he's given to you as a group as well as individually um, because you will walk in all that God has for you. Amen. Pastor.